Hello everyone, my name is Glauber Destro, I'm here in North Italy, I serve here in Italy, and I really love to talk about missions in Europe. That's the reason why today I will have this conversation with my friend Lois, who is American from New Jersey, and he's serving for about three years in Belgium, especially in Brussels. So we want to share with you this conversation in order that you can pray better about uh, Brussels, about Belgium, or can, maybe God can talk with you while you are listening, this, watching this conversation. So God bless you and let's start. Hello, Luis, how are you? Hello, Robert. So could you tell us a little bit about yourself, where you are, what, uh, your services over there? Yeah, sure. Um, so I am originally from New Jersey, um, and three years ago, we, we moved here over to Brussels um, for, for work reasons. Um, but we, we got plugged into a, a great church, a great opportunity here in Brussels. Um, we found a church, a church called LifePoint. Um, they are based in Tennessee, but they have a church plant here in Brussels and also one in Bangkok. Um, so, yeah, like when, when we got here, I contacted uh, the pastor at the time, we, we exchanged a couple emails, um, we got plugged in, um, and it was just a, a very good fit. Um, it's a very uh, Bible-based church. Um, we do a lot of expository preaching at our church, um, and, you know, we, we have a lot of um, emphasis on community and small groups um, and things like that. So, um so when I got here about, yeah, when I got here three years ago, uh, we were trying to ramp, the church was trying to ramp up their small groups. Um, and then around like six months into us being here, um, I took over the small groups ministries. Um, and we've been really, really blessed so far. We have, uh, we went from having one small group to having 11 different small groups. Um, and now we're, we're trying to take it to the next step and trying to have some, um, more educational classes, uh, kind of like a Sunday school for adults in the future. Um, all around that emphasis of having good biblical community for people to get plugged into. So. Oh, that's very good. Uh, because when, uh, as what I, I know about how is the Christian, Christian here in Europe, uh, we don't see many churches with uh, 75, 100 members so it's very good to see how is your church and that you have 11 small groups it's difficult to find churches with this number uh, of small groups very good yeah uh, i'd like to talk a, a little bit with you about this country belgium or especially in brussels what are the predominant religions over there yeah so Belgium is, is kind of a funny mixture. Um, half of it speaks Dutch, half of it speaks French. Um, the, in Flanders, they speak Dutch. In Wallonia, they speak French. Um, the reason why they kind of separated from France and, and the Netherlands, um, I think even a, a long time ago, um, was because they were Catholic and the religions in the other countries were more Protestant. Um, so what, what came together to unify Belgium was its Catholicism. Um, so you, you now you've got these two different languages being spoken in the country, and then you have Brussels basically in the middle of it, um, where you're supposed to speak both French and Dutch, and uh, the third unofficial language turns out to be English, uh, which is kind of convenient for us. Um, but yeah, uh, Brussels is a great city. It's very international, as you know. It's where the United Nations is. It's where the EU is. Um, it's where NATO has um, its offices. Um, so it's it's really a great place to be um, because we, we get so many people from different countries coming um, and getting to be part of our church as well. Um, the predominant religions in in Brussels and Belgium um, half of Belgians would claim to be Catholic to some extent, 
Um, out of that percentage, uh, I'm not sure how many are practicing Catholics. I would say it's very, very low. Uh, most of the Belgians that I've met outside of church uh, don't know what an evangelical church is. Um, they're just, they're more used to a Catholic style church. Um, they, they'll go, you know, for Easter maybe, for the holidays maybe, and for weddings. Um, but there, it's definitely a uh, more of a cultural uh, Catholicism than a practicing Catholicism. Um, a lot of the Belgians, we don't have that many Belgians at church. I would say around 20% of the people are Belgian. Um, they, they are more familiar with evangelical churches from before, um, even though it's not, it's not a very large number here, or very large percentage here in Brussels. Um, there is some significant percentage of, um, of uh, charismatic churches, uh, especially around the um, African communities. Um, and, but I would say most people um, will identify as just being culturally Catholic or having no belief at all. So. Okay. And about the churches? Um, what what could you tell us about um, how are the churches like how many members there are in the other churches or how is the liturgy the programs of the church um, you you know more about how is the church in America so maybe compared with America if there are some huge differences I don't know what can you tell us so our uh... Our style is, is very much like um, what I was used to in, in New York City, um, where you know you have some, some pretty good rock and music in the beginning, a very applicable sermon, and then uh, some activities or fellowship time afterwards or opportunities for fellowship after service. Um, kind, of, kind of like your, your traditional evangelical American style. Um, that's, that's what we've started here in, in Brussels. Uh, that's what the church started here five years ago. Um, other churches that we know of in Brussels, um, there are some churches that are very, very open that will just meet in people's homes. Um, they, I mean, I would kind of question how strong their teaching is um, since they rotate the teaching on every week. Um, then there's also uh, some more traditional churches Um obviously the Catholic Church, very traditional, um, but I have, um, I have visited uh, services in Flanders where it's, uh, it's more of a traditional, you know, they read, they'll read some scripture, there will be a sermon, and then there will be some hymns being sung. Uh, I'm not sure of many other churches. I think there's one more church that's doing it like we're doing it in Waterloo, but it's, um, it's very few. So I, I would think that we are probably... Oh, probably the only one in Brussels doing the American style service. Um, and then the other one would be in Waterloo. Um, and besides that, it seems to be a lot of more traditional style services. Mm -hmm. uh, you said in the beginning that, that uh, many people doesn't know how are the, uh, who, we, who we are, no? How, what is the evangelical church, no? Um, I was thinking, are there many missionaries? There are missionaries? Uh, do you see missionaries around there? Or um, pastors planting church, new churches? Um, there are adding, mis, 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 um, adding self mis, missionaries around there. There's that group in, in Waterloo that just recently planted another church. Um, so there's, there's a few. Um, I wouldn't say that there's a lot. Um, there's obviously our church. Um, it's very heavy missionary based. Um, there's also some, there's actually some uh, Dutch missions as well. Um, there's, a, there's a home that we have uh, here in Brussels for, just for missionaries. Um, and they, what they do is like, you know, they'll have housing and they'll supply food for missionaries that are here visiting. Uh, so, but I, I don't, yeah, I don't think there's that, 
besides that, there's not that many missionaries here doing doing work. Okay, that's good to know. Uh, in order for us to pray uh, specifically for Brussels, for Belgium, uh, and about still about the churches, uh, what do you think the churches over there are growing or decreasing? How how are the churches there? Um, a lot of the growth that we get tends to be international. Um, the growth from like actual Belgium seems to be a little bit slower, but uh, Brussels is is very very international. Obviously, with a lot of the international offices being here uh, for Europe and for a lot of the world. Um, but yeah, we've we've actually um, we've had unbelievable growth in a lot in five years. The church has been here for five years. Um, obviously, you start with like ten people or something very small. Uh, to now, like, we're averaging between 70 and 100 people. Um, we had our five-year anniversary, and we had a record attendance of about 125 people. Um, so there's definitely, um, there's definitely, I think, room for growing churches here. Um, whenever, we, whenever we optimize our, our outreach strategy, we do get results. So um, I would say it's... Uh, it's a great place to be doing outreach and to have a church because there are people that are looking, there are constantly people arriving. Um, and then obviously there's, you know, the impact that you have of reaching actual Belgians, which takes a bit longer, I feel, um, but is definitely well worth it. Okay. And um, my, one of my last questions um, about the, this country um, uh, I would like to know the problems I don't know if the problem is the right word but the the situations hard situations like one you you said already that is uh, there are no there are no many missionaries around there so that's something that we we, we should work more on that do you see other points uh, you mean difficulties uh, for Belgian society? Um, I think the, the biggest difficulty is just not knowing and not knowing what a church is, not knowing what it's like to have a relationship with Christ. Um, I, I, I always quote this from Tim Keller. Um, you know, people in this society have been inoculated um, to the gospel. Uh, meaning that they've heard it already um, and they've already assuming that that's not for them and they just quickly move on. Um, so that, that kind of, um, maybe it's a, it's a postmodern thing. That kind of mindset is, I think, the greatest need here in Belgium. Um, it's a great place to live. Um, there's great food. There's great activities. The weather is actually not that bad. Um, so in terms of needs that people have, it's very hard for us here to identify, you know, what we need is the gospel. Um, I think that's the greatest challenge. Um, you know, if, if you do a missionary trip to a third world country, it, it's pretty easy to like, you know, uh, have some kind of activity, have some kind of, uh, you know, food service or have some kind of, you know, um, housing project that'll supply people's needs and open their hearts to the gospel. Here, it's a bit more difficult because everybody has everything that they need. Um, the way that we try to um, open people's hearts to it is by developing that community. Um, and Belgians tend to be very close with their friends and family. They tend to have really strong relationships. Um, but we're trying to, you know, just to show them, you know, um, there's a joy in having fellowship um, with other Christians and just showing them, you know, uh, we are a family as well. Um, and this is a, a relationship that will transform your life. So trying to have community and relationship with Belgians um, has been very effective. Um, it's a bit more difficult to, obviously it takes more time to build a relationship, 
Um, but that's um, that's where we're seeing the need is um, in having those close relationships and fellowships and having people understand that they do have a need for the gospel. Okay, very good. And uh, my last question, how can we pray specifically for this country? Um, it, it would be for for that, for softening uh, the hearts of Belgians to the gospel and to having relationship and fellowship with other Christians. Um, yeah, we do have, yeah, we have opportunities for other missionaries to come here to do more church work. Um, but it, it's a, I think Belgium is, is very, um, it's a good example of postmodernism, you could say, uh, where everybody is trying to search for their own happiness in their own way. Um, and what that means is that people will often not know that they need the gospel um, they might, you know, have difficulties in their life. They might suffer with depression, which is pretty prevalent here as well. Um, but not knowing that they need the gospel, not knowing that that's the, the ultimate solution for them. Um, so I, I mean, for prayers, I mean, I would just say, uh, pray, pray for the hearts of Belgians. Um, cause it's, it's very difficult to, it's very difficult to try to explain to someone, Hey, you there's something that I have that I need to tell you about when they think they have everything that they need. So. Okay. Thank you so much, Luis, to explain better uh, for us about uh, Belgium, specifically, especially Brussels. And uh, would you like to, to tell us a, uh, a little bit more about you, like your projects or future projects? And also, how we can pray for you? Yeah, absolutely. Um, we're we're working on a a few projects at church um, um, that were, that I'm that I'm obviously involved in the leadership of. Um, what where our hearts are is we'd like to to create more French and Dutch speaking content. Um, I'll give you an example. Like, let's say you, you need a book on. Uh, Christian marriage, right? If you do a Google search in English, you get hundreds of results. Um, if you do a similar search in French, then it's uh, it's obviously a lot smaller. Um, but we're trying to create some content for the future in French and Dutch languages for, for all of Europe to be able to use. Okay, very good. Uh, and do you have more prayer requests? Um, no, I mean, <laughs> between the hearts and helping us to, to create content to be used in French and Dutch, um, I think that's pretty big. Uh, I, I mean, it's just for us, it's, it, um, I do have to mention it's an, an amazing praise um, that, we've, that we've been able to establish ourselves here, that we do have, um, you know, in my mind, you know, 70 to 100 people is pretty small uh, coming from the U.S., but um, we, we do know that that's an amazing blessing in, in Europe, in Brussels. So I think I, that's, that's what I would say. Okay. Thank you very much, Louis. Um, thank you for to have this time to talk with us about Brussels. And... Uh, I hope you guys that are watching this video, you can start praying better about Brussels and remember to, to pray also for Louis and his church and we hope God can uh, work even more and more in your life, Louis, in your ministries, your church and we can see uh, God doing great things over there. God bless you. Stop